What's up, sons? It's Blind Rod with Son of Attack once again. Well, it's been a while, but I just couldn't help but bring you guys the Unicorn Sacrifice. Yeah, that's because of the, all the RGB and neon colors. But basically, the point of the video is going to give you guys or point you guys in the direction of what I would consider one of the easiest ways to do a custom loop. And that's primarily because Borrow has a waterway system for this particular case, which is the Corsair 500D that includes basically a list of all of the attachments you could need to put this together. What that does is make it very, very simple for you to go ahead and at least get all the parts ordered, which is almost half the battle for doing a custom loop. But there are some caveats to that as far as difficulty curve and so on that we'll go over after we talk about the parts. So when I posted a picture of the RX 5700 XT with a water block on it, the first comment that I saw or recognized with somebody saying well you could have bought an RTX 2080 Super for that yes I could have but I couldn't have put it underwater with purple fluid so for the same price so that's the reasoning behind it actually the reason is a lot more simple than that I had the RX 5700 XT already on hand and wanted to do a custom loop for the land parties this year and I didn't want to spend a whole bunch of extra money in doing a whole new build so that's why we have the RX 5700 XT. Additionally, that's why we have the Ryzen 5 3600 and I didn't go above or beyond to improve that because I've been playing on this system for a while at 1440p with 144 hertz panel and it does everything that I want it to do for gaming, which is the entire purpose of it. I didn't see a reason to bump up any higher for my personal needs, especially for going to LAN parties. I have a FreeSync 1080p 75 hertz monitor that I use for LAN parties. It's a little on the cheaper end as well. And that's just because I don't want to take out the best gear to a LAN party. So it kind of fits, you know, 75 hertz 1080p FreeSync monitor, uh, 5700 XT, and of course the Ryzen 5 3600, which will be just enough to get some content made and do whatever I need while I'm at the LAN parties or coming up this weekend, PAX South. So there you go, that's the reason why we're on the budget end. Where we didn't cheap out was the motherboard. The motherboard in particular on this one is the AMD, or ASUS, excuse me, AM4 Tough X570 Gaming Wi-Fi. And it has pretty much all the features. The only thing it's lacking that I'm really disappointed in is a USB-C front header. And that's because the 500D does have a USB-C front port on the top but I don't have any place to plug it in. I am debating getting a little PCI slot, but probably not for the LAN events because I feel like it would kind of ruin the overall look because they're bare and you have to run a SATA cable to it. Quite disappointing that, that this motherboard doesn't have that. The other feature it doesn't have that the newer, later features of X570 have is gonna be Wi-Fi 6. So this doesn't have Wi-Fi 6, keep that in mind but the link to the motherboard is down below. It does have a four pin and an eight pin for the CPU power, so the overclocking headroom should be there, but with Ryzen CPUs, as we all know, it appears overclocking is kind of a dead sport, at least as it stands for daily use. Pairing it off, we have 16 gigabytes of the Trident Z Neo memory clocked at 3600 megahertz, and that's gonna be four sticks. And I would have stuck with 16, which I already had in the system, but filling out the RAM slots for taking out to LAN parties just looks better. So really, honestly, the whole thing's about looks, but also that kind of reasonable gaming performance along with the looks, and that's why you see it. Moving on from there, powering it all is the Corsair RMX 850 watt power supply. Initially we had the Antec 850 watt power supply. I could not for the life of me find the Molex cables for that power supply. I've had it for over a year. That's just going to go in another build. I need the Molex pin for or the Molex connector for the pump of course. So unfortunately we did grab the Corsair uh, power supply just from Best Buy because uh, I was frustrated and <laughs> was like I don't care anymore. We're going and buying a power supply and getting this rig up. The hard drive is going to be the Sabrent one terabyte Rocket NVMe drive. Probably the biggest upgrade I've seen in a while, in my humble opinion. So if you're really looking at what you should upgrade right now, if you're not super far behind on anything, uh, PCIe 
4.0 NVMe drives are twice as fast, over twice as fast as the previous generation PCIe 3.0 versions. This particular one uh, goes up to 5,000 megabytes read and write. So it's just incredibly fast and amazing. Of course, you will need an X570 motherboard. Uh, so keep that in mind if you're looking at purchasing one. We already talked about the case, but we also have the water blocks to talk about. Now, Borrow does make water blocks. And if you can source them, uh, I would recommend getting the Borrow specific water blocks for your components and that's going to be because the rgb fan header rgb slash fan header is a all-in-one piece that plugs into a proprietary controller from borrow and i'm not a big fan of it to be completely honest and we'll talk about it a little bit more um, here coming up as we get into the build but i would recommend probably going with uh, a different RGB solution and then using the converter off of the actual uh, waterway and and maybe either doing that right and going with the standard blocks or going everything borrow so that the adapters are there for example the fans also use those adapters for that specific controller so if you're gonna buy this exact setup I wouldn't get the EK block or at least RGB block um, and I would probably get not get any other um, CPU block either and that's actually because the in and outs on the EK blocks are spaced just a little bit differently than on the waterway so it's very slight and while I got it lined up really really well there's a little like um, curve or not curve but a, a slight incline on the two pipes coming from the CPU to the waterway and there's nothing I can do about it except put a different block on it and it would probably have to be a borrow block they weren't really in stock anywhere that was going to ship to me in time to get this ready for the next LAN event and that's why we have EK blocks on here so just a quick note in case you guys are looking at doing this build so that's the vector and then on the CPU we have the EK Supremacy Ryzen Water Block. Initially I had tried to get a custom cut Ryzen Water Block but there was some leak issues and so on with it and first it didn't come with the right bracket so I went over to a local gaming shop called X Gamer PC. They had a bracket for me. I grabbed that, slapped it on, slapped it on the rig and then when we were leak testing it just kept leaking everywhere and I couldn't seem to get it tight enough now it came pre-installed with fittings and I don't know if it had been used before because it definitely had the seal broken it had the Intel bracket on it the AMD bracket was missing out of the box and it leaked everywhere so unfortunately we didn't use it we primed out an EK supremacy water block and that went in in its place now, if you get it right out of the box from EK, the, uh, the inlet and outlet are gonna be horizontal and you're gonna need to take that apart and rotate it 90 degrees to be vertical to work with this particular waterway. Once you get that all up though, you'll be good to go. So as far as radiator, we went with their recommendation of a single 360 millimeter radiator. This particular one is 30 millimeters thick. I really personally don't think you could go thicker. While it does say in the guide that it supports many different radiator sizes, I didn't find that to be true. 30 does seem to be where you're gonna be capped out at because of the pump coming off of the waterway. So unless you relocated that pump, uh, you're not gonna be able to do it. And then the rad or the fans on the rad would cover the waterway. And so it's really not gonna be a good look either. So really a 30 millimeter thick, 360 millimeter tall radiator is gonna be what you wanna go with. This particular one's the Alpha Cool. It's just already something I had in a box sitting over here from a previous build. And I decided to use it because when we did the Call of Duty uh, build, which should be on this channel somewhere, uh, we went ahead and swapped out for the super thick uh, 
radiator from Foiba because we were able to fit it. So I had this one already laying around and plopped it in here. Now it is curious that we aren't running at least like 240 millimeters per component because we have a GPU and a CPU, but this is what they recommended. So I went with it. Typically I would go with two rads in a build like this. And as you guys have seen before, most of the time I do have that. Those have been Intel though. So there's a couple things here that I think make this okay. One is that the 3600 uh, does stay a little bit cooler than say like trying to overclock the snot out of an 8700K, right? The other thing is, is that we aren't doing anything but precision boost overdrive at this point with that particular processor because it caps out at 4.2 gigahertz, whether you manually overclock or if you just leave precision boost overdrive on as we found out in testing. And we'll talk about thermals here in just a bit because you're probably also wondering if the thermals are still okay. So with the fans, we went with the Borrow fans, which I'm glad we did because that works with the Borrow RGB controller. And the thing with the controller is it does sync with Asus Aura, which it is synced right now, but it is intermittent. And I can't figure out if that's software or the controller or which one exactly. We do get these weird flashing strobing things that happen every once in a while. And I've tried fiddling with the RGB connection and that didn't seem to fix it. Reboots appear to fix it. So the best to my ability as far as diagnosing this issue is that there's still something wrong with the Aura software, which is not surprising. However, I will say the memory, the G-Skill Trident Z Neo, didn't require any funky kind of additional installs like Corsair RGB memory does and is recognized by the Aura software right away, which was super nice because uh, that's one of the installs that makes your RGB uh, control way worse with Aura is having to do like that Corsair IQ software implemented install uh, with the RGB controller or not the RGB controller but the RGB header for Aura and it causes a whole bunch more intermittent issues so I think this uh, the G skill with Aura is definitely a, a huge recommendation for me and just the Neo in general with the Ryzen processor is also going to be the memory I recommend hands down in any Ryzen build, period. You get the 3600 megahertz Neo, G-Skill Neo memory, and you're gonna get performance increases out the wall zoo just compared to like fiddling with anything else. That being said, they have taken away Infinity Fabric being governed by the memory and you can overclock that and the compatibility is much better. So it's not a necessity like it used to be with Flare X where I would be like, don't even try it. It's not gonna be fun to being more of, this is just gonna be the easiest way to get the best performance out of your Ryzen processor. So the RGB strips we went with were the Deep Cool RGB. They're just off Amazon, super easy to find. And we have two strips in there, one running along the top and one running down the back side of the PC because the waterway pretty much takes care of all the lighting you need for the front side. And throwing one down by the PSU cover would just make the LEDs too bright and in the reflection and I never like the look so that's why we only have two of those since we are gonna go with the thermal take power supply uh, initially the re that's the reason we have cable extensions these cable extensions are on Amazon super easy to pick up and they come with everything you need I had to order two kits though because they didn't come with enough CPU power extensions for this particular build because we have the additional four pin. So keep that in mind if you're doing that. However, my recommendation would be getting one of the pre-built kits for the Corsair power supplies, uh, which I will be picking up for this. It did make cable management with the extensions a little bit more difficult, but it does make bleeding the, the system way easier. Um, and so or in leak testing and the reason for that is you can just basically at the connection you can have everything cable managed in the front right and then at the actual connection with the extension you can just pull that off pull the ones off from the GPU uh, so from the motherboard or sorry yeah the power to the motherboard the 24 pin 
the, the eight pin and the four pin, disconnect those and disconnect to the GPU. And then you can just do that all from the back without having to redo your cable management up front and then just jump it from there and do all of your leak testing as uh, without having to undo everything, which I find to be super convenient. Uh, but not the best looking right so it took a lot of work to get everything cable managed on the back side and this does have a tempered glass panel on the back side so you want to get it as good as you can i do have the two rgb connections one from the the so there's a splitter that runs uh, from the motherboard to the graphics card and to the rgb controller and I have those sticking out right now currently and that's for troubleshooting or was for troubleshooting some of the uh, RGB issues I was having with Aura. Okay, so let's talk fittings because fittings are one of those things that's going to be pretty difficult typically if you're going for a custom loop right off the bat. And they recommended 14 millimeter outer diameter with 10 millimeter inner diameter tubing. So the fittings are gonna be 14 millimeter outer diameter fittings. And if you go to the page that I'm gonna link down below, you can basically search the part numbers and get everything you need and order the exact number that they recommend. Uh, except for a couple less 90 degrees because you aren't gonna have a second GPU. Uh, so, well, I think they got the 90 degree count off by two uh, we only needed one two three four 90 degrees and I think they have you order six and then uh, in addition to that they have you order a couple extra uh, actual tube fittings and that's in case you were gonna go with a second GPU in the system which the system we didn't if you go with the second GPU the exact order would be what you would get and so it makes it really easy to just search those. I use Performance PCS. This is not sponsored by Performance PCS, but Mod My Mods did not have all the fittings I needed, and Performance PCS also had the waterway. The last one in stock for the 500D, so sorry guys if you're trying to do exactly the 500D. Hopefully they'll get some back in stock. But there are other waterways for other cases, and you can look them up on the Borrow website and maybe piece together something uh, new and unique, yet with the simple concept of being able to just order exactly what they tell you. So the other thing we did with fittings was we went ahead and tried these new fittings from Borrow, which is supposed to be the never come out fittings. <laughs> so you'll be in the closet the rest of your life, don't worry about it. But for real, what they are is basically a different size gasket or O-ring that is really difficult to install so on my first leak test once we got over all the problems with the cpu water block we had three leaks they were minor leaks but we had three leaks and all of them required me to basically push the push the fitting or not the fitting but the o-ring a little bit further down on the tube before putting the tube on and then really really cranking down uh, the fitting as tight as possible. Now, the advertisement of the tube not coming out for these fittings, absolutely true. It is like I, I pulled on them real hard just in testing and so on, trying to get them to come out. They stay in once they're in, right? But they're really hard to get in. So I still probably prefer like the dual O-ring setup or even the triple O-ring setup. Um, personally but for peace of mind I mean like I know now at this point these tubes are not coming out so there is that and if you want to go through the effort but leak test extensively and then leak test some more with them because the problem is is that if you have the o-ring too far up on the tube and you go in to tighten it down then that o-ring's not going to push against the actual backside of the fitting and it's going to leak there and so you need to have at least a little bit of lip pushing out like past the end of the tube while you're screwing it in and then you need to screw it down really really tight so it can get uh, a little tedious and a little time consuming but i think once you get it done it's probably worth it just because you don't have to worry about the tubes coming out that's kind of my two cents on the whole new borrow fitting thing that i haven't tried yet before but 
Um, I'll try to link a couple down in the description and there'll be a link to Performance PCS as well. Outside of that, we did order the waterway like we talked about and part of that order, you can order a pump that they recommend. Now, as far as the pump goes, I don't know the longevity of it or the quality of it. At this point, it is a borrow pump and it works with the waterways. So it's gonna be the pump you get. It is RGB. Um, so there is yet another connection that's going to come from that and go to that borrow RGB uh, fan controller, RGB slash fan controller. So you're going to have to plug it in there. And you don't really have to plug it in because you're not really going to see it all the time. So then as far as the final fittings go, you have the drain down at the bottom, which they also recommend you getting, and a cap for that drain, and that's going to make draining the system really, really easy. And then at the top, you have a, a basically a button to burp it and a plug for where you're going to fill it. Now, filling this has got to be the most difficult filling process I've ever gone through, and you're going to spill fluid, which is which makes it a really good thing that the waterway is nowhere near any of your components. So what I did was I just took a paper towel and kind of stuffed it between the 90 coming off the pump going to the GPU and between the fan. And that's pretty much where all the fluid will, will accumulate is right down there. And you're going to have to get basically the bottle that has the, the cut end to make it easy to get the fluid in there but if you squeeze too hard you're going to bounce all the fluid off the back it's just going to come right out and if you squeeze too light when you're trying to get rid of the bubbles which we'll talk about here in just a second which was also a pain um, you're not going to be able to get rid of the what is the worst pocket i've ever seen in a loop um, outside of like within the gpu or cpu itself uh, that I've ever had to deal with. It, it's taken about a week to get rid of all the bubbles and the waterway is the primary reason for this and one of the recommendations for, for this is going to be slowing down the pump speed. So the good thing about this particular pump is it has a little knob to where you can control it outside of software and outside of the fan header. So when you're actually doing your leak testing and so on and filling it uh, with that 24 pin and everything else powered down, you are going to be able to adjust that pump speed and actually decreasing the pump speed will help you get rid of this particular pocket. So the pocket that it gets is right above the pump so it comes down and then it kind of opens up and where it opens up is where the pocket comes in and the reason for that is the fluid coming from the top uh, from the radiator is coming in so fast especially if your pump is at a higher speed that the bubble's not able to release and go to the top of the waterway and because there, it's so thin, you know, it's not able to get any room to go to the top of the waterway. So filling it, even if you do slow down the pump, getting rid of that bubble is going to take a little bit of time. You can turn it completely on its backside and that'll force it back through the loop. But the pump picks it up before the uh, top can pick it up, which makes it a little problematic. So the way I did this, and it's messy, is you have to cycle the pump. So you cycle the pump off. And while it's cycling off, as soon as that bubble comes to the top, not before, because you don't want to let the fluid out, but as soon as that bubble comes to the top, you're going to push the red button in and burp it. And that'll let some, some air out. And then when you're trying to refill it, you're going to unscrew that before you turn it back on. Turn it back on with your bottle ready to go. And as those air bubbles come out of the radiator, just try to fill it up to where it's almost dripping out not the cleanest solution but it will get the job done the safest way to do it with the least amount of leakage but you're still going to spill some out when you burp it is just going to be burping it over and over again cycle it on wait till the bubbles accumulate in the waterway cycle it off burp it as soon as the air hits the top do that over and over and over and over and over and over and over again and maybe in a couple weeks or next year you'll have it all all the bubbles out because that's the worst one I've ever done by far it took so, so long it's insane so that's going to be the entire build let's talk about benchmarks and temperatures 
Okay, well, first let's talk about overclocking. So Ryzen CPU maxes with uh, Precision Boost Overdrive, which we mentioned earlier. It's running at 4.2 gigahertz and it'll go up to 1.45 volts. At this uh, voltage with this going on at idle, you're only looking at about 32 degrees Celsius on the CPU, while at load, you're looking at about 64 degrees Celsius on the CPU, but on the CPU package, you're getting up to 75 degrees Celsius. Now, when I was testing initially in the live stream, you guys might remember we hit 80C. Now, we had a few more bubbles going on, and I got that all fixed up and cleaned up over just as the system was running, and we've dropped those another five degrees Celsius which is pretty good now on the noctua nhd 15 at 1.45 volts at 4.2 gigahertz we are hitting 88 c so overall we've had about a what is that a 13 to 14 degree drop which is awesome just by going to water cooling and um, we got that additional five degrees uh, from getting the air out which is super cool as well so uh, a viewer mentioned using F-Clock and overclocking it, researching it, and then, and then implementing it into this system. There's a particular reason or specific reason why it doesn't do as much, and that's because with auto on with the 3600 megahertz memory, the 1833 megahertz overclock on the F-Clock, like he mentioned, uh, isn't really necessary because you're already running at 1800 megahertz on the F clock just with auto set. That's why I said if you really just want the easiest uh, performance, best performing memory uh, for Ryzen, the Neo uh, will take care of really any need to overclock uh, the F clock for the most part. I haven't tested this extensively with going way above and beyond that, but keeping that one-to-one -one, uh, with the CPU and memory, I still find to be just the easiest way to go about it. So GPU, um, this one didn't turn out, so the anniversary edition hasn't turned out to be as binned well as the 5700 XT. I initially did my power play uh, review on and that one was able to hit 2190 megahertz. This one is only hitting 2133 megahertz. Now, no power play. I did try power play, but it kept the, whenever I would apply power play, no matter even if I did the base one, it would basically lock my GPU core to 300 megahertz. I can't get it working uh, right now. Maybe if I figure out what's going on or what happened in the new adrenaline software, or if you guys know, let me know in the comment section below. So at stock, basically like no, no reg edits, nothing like that. We were able to overclock to 2133 megahertz on the GPU core and 1830 megahertz on the GPU memory. The performance increases were definitely noticeable. Um, so going through those in TimeSpy, we scored a total of 9,616 and getting over 10,000 on the GPU score, which is pretty respectable, pretty close to what I was getting with PowerPlay. So it's probably not even necessary to do PowerPlay at this point. And then Firestrike, we had a 22,126. We already talked about the drive speed, so we'll skip over that. Some real world gaming benchmarks, Dirt Rally 1440p Ultra was 119 FPS average. Far Cry New Dawn was 77 FPS average. And Shadow of the Tomb Raider, once again 1440p highest settings, 83 FPS average. So it is true that the 5700 XT and the Ryzen 5 3600 is great for 1440p gaming. Of course, 1440p super high refresh rate gaming, maybe not, but the super high refresh rate gaming that you're wanting to do with that is gonna be more along the lines of what you saw in Dirt Rally. Finally, temperatures. So we already talked about the CPU temperatures and the only thing we have left is the GPU temperatures. Idle, we're down to 34C and at load, we're up to or down to really uh, 62 degrees Celsius, allowing basically the 5700 XT to no longer throttle or have any worries of throttling, unlike it did previously, which was absolutely awful and throttling all the time. And I've been able to play some games on it as well. And everything's been good with the latest adrenaline software on the 5700 XT, except for Fortnite. So for whatever reason, Fortnite 
has hitching and it's really really annoying we talked about the hitching issues with the drivers on the 5700 series or and it's been a problem for a while i'm really hoping they get that resolved the driver release right before this one i didn't have it in fortnite anymore so it came back with whatever happened in the latest driver patch um, but the rest of the games have no issues it's been running better uh, longer and obviously quieter underwater so super worth it and if you guys are looking at a very simple way to put together a system as far as ordering the parts i i would recommend the waterway uh, outside of the caveats of the rgb controller kind of being trash speaking of we need to talk about that a little bit more it has intermittent issues where it won't report the cpu fan speed to the motherboard so i have had three times where it's booted up and said uh, CPU fan error and I go in then it resolves so for whatever reason there's something wrong uh, with that controller as far as that goes and then we have the blinking and then the proprietary nature of it means you're going to want to order everything borrow uh, to make it the most simplistic otherwise you're going to be either soldering or getting splitters or something along those lines let me know what you guys think of the build I'm super excited for it it'll be at PAX DreamHack Dallas and QuakeCon. So if you're going to be out at any one of those, uh, just come say hi. You can tweet at me and I'll tell you what seats I'm at and you can come say hi and take a look at the build in person. Other than that, I'll see you next Tuesday.